Hey everyone, for this video I'm going to talk through my process for creating this painting of my daughter at the beach using a variety of watercolor techniques and some interesting color combinations, especially for the sand. One color I used a lot of for this painting, particularly in the sky, is M. Graham Manganese Blue Hue. I started by taping the sides because I wanted my composition to be 10 by 20 inches vertical and I also applied a piece of tape to the horizon line. Using a spray bottle and a large Mottler brush, I painted the sky area with clean water. My paper, by the way, is Fabriano Artistico, 140 pound hot pressed paper. Then with my manganese blue hue, I quickly blocked in my sky, just painting around areas where I wanted to leave the white of the paper showing through for clouds. I switched to a large, soft, round brush to begin softening the edges around the clouds. This is probably one of the trickiest aspects of painting skies, especially on hot pressed paper, because it tends to dry so quickly, and watercolor paint, of course, is prone to dry with hard edges. So I worked in sections where the clouds formed a natural separation in the sky, and this helped me focus on smaller areas. I also used a tissue to blot and bring back some of the white if maybe I painted over those too much. And then once I was happy with the blue sky, I added in shadows inside of the clouds using a smaller round brush and watered down indigo mixed with a little quinacridone magenta for a more purplish hue. I was careful to soften the edges with each application of paint. Once the sky was done, I grabbed my masking fluid and a rubber brush and blocked in the little people in the background. There's a couple of swimmers in the ocean and they have bright sunlight on their bodies, so I wanted to make sure that those were protected before I painted the ocean. And then once again, I applied another piece of tape to my now dry sky and painted in the ocean. For the ocean, I used a mixture of indigo and a little bit of cobalt green by Holbein and a combination with my manganese blue. I really switched up the colors and went back and forth between more pigmented color and more mixes. I wanted it to have a variety within the blues. Since the ocean is constantly moving and changing, I didn't want it to look flat. So you can see the little swimmers in the background are carefully protected because of that masking fluid that I applied ahead of time. I watered down my paint a little bit as I came closer to the surf and I used a little bit more of my cobalt green because as the ocean comes closer to the sand it starts to take on more of a greenish hue as it's getting more shallow. Once certain areas were dry I could go back in and add darker waves. You'll notice that I also avoided a couple of little highlights in the ocean where maybe there's some white caps forming and some waves rolling in. Once I removed my tape, I realized that some of my paint had bled underneath into the sky, which was a little bit annoying. I had to take a damp brush and just remove that paint and swipe that out. Nothing that you can't fix if you have good quality cotton paper. I removed the masking fluid on my little swimmers and painted in some really light skin tones in the areas that are in the sun, using a much smaller brush for these details. And then using a black mixture of indigo and burnt umber, I painted in the dark shadows on their bodies and on their heads. Not a whole lot of detail is needed, just the light and shadow is all you need to tell the story of those tiny little details in the background. With the ocean done, I went back in with some dark colors to paint the shape of the surf coming in. There's a shadow that's cast by the water as it's turning and foaming and rolling and it creates this bumpy line in the foreground. So I painted that in and also started to carefully paint in some of the details of the water along the top of that surf, along the top of the foaming water as it's rolling in. I used my cobalt green quite a bit and mixed in a little bit of yellow if I wanted it to look more natural. For any scene, all you really need are a set of primary colors and I had a fairly odd set for this painting. I used my manganese blue and also my indigo for my blue colors. And I used my cobalt green quite a bit. And then I also had Hansa yellow and Gamboge Nova for yellows. And then for my reds, I used a variety of magentas, including quinacridone magenta, bright rose luminous, and alizarin crimson for the sand. I blocked in a first wash of color on the sand using a combination of my cobalt green hue, my manganese blue, and my different magentas, and a little bit of the yellow. Pretty much a whole combination of all of my primaries. 
And when, when you mix all of these colors, you end up with more of a neutral brownish tone, and that's exactly what I wanted for the sand. I painted carefully around the little figure with this first wash, but then I decided because I was, it was forming some strange hard edges, I wanted to paint more carefully around her, so I applied masking fluid all around the figure, very careful to form her outline perfectly. I figured this would give me a lot more freedom with broader brush strokes to paint the sand in the background. Painting on masking fluid takes a lot of patience and quite a bit of time, but if you apply it in large chunks like this, it peels off really easily and it works so well. I also used masking fluid to blot in some of the little shapes of water that are reflecting the sunlight on the sand. And I just used a little dabbing motion to create those dots where you see those little areas that are glistening in the light on the sand. With that done, I felt free to begin the sand on the beach. There's a section just in front of the surf where you have all of these beautiful waves forming in a much darker value. I used a combination of my indigo and my cobalt green and a little bit of my manganese blue and painted in those ocean waves. You can tell that the water is really shallow here. You'll notice I'm being careful to avoid all of the highlights. There are areas in the water horizontal streaks that are catching the light and I wanted to carefully preserve some of those. Once that was dry I could remove my masking fluid. I then went on to the other side and did the same thing just carefully painting these bumpy horizontal lines representing the shapes of the water. There's a strong dark line where some of the water is rolling forward so I included that and I used some more vibrant blues and greens to indicate the water reflecting the beautiful blue sky above. You really just need to carefully observe your reference photo and paint with patience when you're working on water. I didn't want to be overly pedantic either though or photorealistic with this, so I made sure to include sections where I used broader brush strokes and much freer movement in my painting. I wanted it to look like a painting and not just a photo. So here you can see me scumbling on the paint in a rather haphazard manner, and I'm alternating between more neutral tones and then more richly pigmented tones with blue and with a brown that I created using my yellow and my magenta and my blue. So the sand is really just a combination of all of my crazy primary colors. As I approach the figure, I went a little bit darker with the blue color between her legs there, but I was glad that I had the masking fluid because I was able to paint so freely across that leg. For the shadows, I painted these rather loosely. I just wanted it to look like a soft shadow of her and reflection of her body against the wet sand. I even used some vertical brush strokes to offset the generally horizontal look of this painting. And once again, for the sand color, I used a lot of magenta, yellow, cobalt green, manganese, blue, indigo, huge variety of colors in the sand, but really no true yellow at all. And I think this looks a little more natural than what you would see if you were trying to just paint a yellow beach. For the skin tones in the shadow, I used alizarin crimson, burnt umber, and indigo for a really, really dark tone. And then I dropped in little hints of magenta to indicate her pink skin. I then removed some of that masking fluid so that I could freely paint her hair. It looks really, really dark when you first put that in and it looks unnatural, but once I started painting in the hair in more gold tones, using a variety of burnt siennas and umbers and a little bit of blues here and there and some greens, it started to look more and more natural. Sometimes when you apply a really dark value and it looks really stark against a light value, you think, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> but just trust your instincts and trust what you're seeing in your reference photo and try to make your values accurate. If I were to paint that face too light, it would look really strange and unearthly. The curls were a bit challenging. I had to use a really tiny brush and just focus on the different shapes that I was seeing 
And then if it started to look too PC, I just went back in with more broad washes and sort of blurred out all of those shapes. I was careful to leave some of those little curls in the light, just catching the sunlight on them. And she had this little beautiful braid. And for that, I just did a couple of horizontal brush strokes and one vertical one indicating the shape of that French braid in her hair. I then removed the masking fluid on the rest of the dress. And some of my blue paint bled under onto her arms, so I had to scrub that out with a clean brush. Once again, if you don't have cotton paper, that could be a problem, but if you have something that's high quality, it can take that beating. I finished the ponytail and then started painting in some very light skin tones using watered down burnt sienna. I also removed the masking fluid where the light is shimmering on the ocean sand. And I used a soft, large brush to remove the masking fluid. For the legs, again, I started with a light wash of burnt sienna and then immediately went darker, wet and wet. The leg that's reaching forward is pretty much completely in shadow, but there are different shifting color temperatures within the shadow. You can see on her heel, it gets a lot more blue, and then there's more reddish tones in her toes. There's a very dark shadow on her right leg, so I made sure to include that first, and then to soften the edges as it transitions from dark shadow into bright sunlight. Once again, I noticed inside of her foot quite a few different color temperature changes between cool and very warm. And you can see how tiny these details are if you compare the size of my hand to what I'm working with here on the painting. I had to use my smallest brush and just paint really slowly and really carefully. I painted the dark shadow on her arm, again softening the edge where it transitions from dark to light. And then for the fingertips, I started with the dark shadows on the left side of each finger. The shadow underneath her body was really fun to paint. I used a combination of my manganese blue, my indigo, and my cobalt green for most of the shadow shape. Once I added that, it was really starting to look like a figure in the bright sunlight. For the dress, I used a combination of my magenta and my manganese blue and a little bit of my indigo to make it look like a purple color within the shadow. The dress itself is actually a really light pink, but in the shadows it looks almost purple. I did a lot of wet and wet so that those wrinkles inside of the shadow would just blend and bloom nicely. Again, I had to really be careful to observe my reference photo to see where the color temperature changes from warmer to cooler. And all of this, I think, helps lend a really realistic look to it. I wanted to keep in mind that this is a painting and I want it to look like a painting, so I kept my brush strokes fairly loose and quick. There's a little green ribbon on the top of the dress and a couple of ribbons that go horizontally through the dress too, so I painted those in and then smoothed out some of my hard edges. With that first layer done, I needed to darken it one more time, so I went over the whole shadow shape in the dress with another layer of my purple mixture. And I think the values looked correct after that last layer. There's a little red bow in the center of her dress or butterfly shape so I added that in using my lizard crimson and then I went over the toes one more time with a pop of magenta just to add that lifelike look to those toes. Sometimes when you're working with cooler color temperatures all you need is to just add some really nice warm tones in key places like the cheeks, the fingertips, the toes and then it suddenly looks like it's a living, breathing thing. I darkened up the shadows on the legs one more time, and there was my finished painting. I had so much fun with this ocean scene. It took me about two hours to complete, and I'm excited to hang it on my wall. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.